Hello, in this video we are going to show you how to display AdMob ads using the Cocos Helper. First of all, what you want to make sure is that you've got the Cocos Helper set up. If you haven't, don't worry, we've got a really easy to use video and there'll be a link in the description to that. So let's go to AdMob. Once you're on AdMob, you want to create a new application. If you've already got one, then you can use that. So you can search for your app, add your app manually, or select from apps you've already added. So I'm just going to create one manually. So I'm just going to call it Test JS Helper App. I'm going to select a platform. This is iOS. We will have a separate video for Android as well. So check that out if you're interested in Android Dev. Click Add App. An error occurred. Please try again later. Uh, I know what is wrong. I don't have Wi-Fi on. Click add up. There we go. And so we want to select the type of ad. We're going to show you both. So let's do a banner ad first. Some basic properties. I'm just going to leave everything as it is. I'm going to put banner ad. Save it. So we're going to need this ad unit ID. But before that, let's create another ad. So interstitial. Again, if you want to mess around with this, go go for it. Full screen ad. That's where an interstitial ad is. Is full screen. Saving. How do you say interstitial? It, it is pronounced interstitial, but I've heard people say interstitial. Uh, actually, I used to say that as well. But I'll, it'll be interesting to know how people in general say. So just let us know in the comments. So what we want to do is just click the done button. We've got both the ad IDs there. Let's go back to our project and what we need to do is go to the folder in which we downloaded the Cocos Helper. Go to the external framework for iOS. For Google Mobile Ads, unzip it and you'll get this Mobile Ads SDK folder. Copy this framework inside it. And what you want to do is just go to where your project is. So right click frameworks, that's the easiest way. Just paste it in here doesn't actually matter really where you paste it and just add it to frameworks does again doesn't really matter where in here you add it but this just keeps it all organized so just make sure your options are set to the same as mine click finish and now what we need to do is go to our settings file enable add mob in a comment next to it it's got all the extra frameworks that we need we'll be adding them in a second scroll down and we can add our add banner unit ID we can add a top banner ad unit and a bottom banner ad unit so you can have two ads on the screen at once which is really cool but we're just going to use the same ad unit which you can there's nothing stopping you from doing it it's just if you wanted to track each ad banner separately we provide that method so just copy and paste that let's get the full screen ad and put that there the test device we don't have that yet we'll get it once we actually run our application and actually show an ad mob ad the reason you want to add the test device id here is really take this seriously it's not just google other and networks as well have a tendency to ban accounts without warning if they start seeing traffic from a particular account on a particular device just all of a sudden they think you're trying to get a some quick revenue and they will just ban it and it's really hard to reinstate your application so just be careful so running it once really ain't gonna harm it which you have to do anyway so the next thing we need to do and final thing to set up is just add these frameworks right here so just go to your project go to build phases link binary with libraries what you'll see is it's automatically added the Google mobile ads dot framework. If it's not there for whatever reason, just click plus and search for it. Pretty self-explanatory. I've added the frameworks that we need in a text editor, but again, they are in a comment in the settings file, so you can get them from there. So we need add support dot framework. We need audio toolbox, which is added by default, AV Foundation. Again, added by default. Core graphics, which is also added by default. We need core media dot framework. The next one we need is core telephony. Don't you think telephony is a funny word? Telephony. I think it's a funny word. Not in terms of its meaning, just how it sounds. So let me know what you think of the sound of telephony. So we need event kit framework. You just need both of them. 
What I've noticed is pretty much anything that has event kit or requires event kit framework, it, re it requires both. I don't know why, never really looked into it. If anyone knows, uh, let us know in the comments. It'll be interesting to find out. Message UI dot framework store kit dot framework uh, system config dot framework. I've always thought system config. It did not add them. So let's go again. Add support dot framework. Frameworks. Okay, they are added there. To and to solve this, what we're gonna do is just remove them. This is just my bad. Oh. Okay, that's weird. I'm just gonna delete them from here. Let's remove references and try adding them again. Quickly go through it. Okay, so that is really, really weird why that is not adding. Okay, I'm just gonna close this down. Close Xcode, actually fully close Xcode down. And now reopen it. <laughs> That's the first time that error has happened. Or that problem, I should say. Go back here. Okay, yeah, add support has been added and updated, which was the last one we added. Okay, so if you ever have that issue, never had it before. I'm not gonna edit it out because, well, you might have that problem. If you do, just remove them from there, relaunch Xcode, and you should be all good. At least we'll find out. So I'm just gonna burst through these, I'm not really gonna talk about them now more. Core media, core telephony. Yeah, because that's usually what happens, they move down when they're being added. I was thinking they were moving down. Ah, it's all good now anyway. So we are on message UI. Store kit, store kit dot framework, system configuration dot framework. Okay, there we go. Now we're all set up. We can go to the app.js file file. And what I'm going to do is show a banner ad when the application launches. So sonar cocos helper dot add mob dot show banner ad. And now we're ready to test it. It's really that simple. So if we run our application, I'm running it on my phone. And what I've done is I've connected my phone up to the iMac and I've also linked it to QuickTime as a movie recording so you can actually see it. I just find it's better this way instead of holding over another device trying to record, get it all lined up correctly, one, let's say, using the mouse and then editing that in afterwards just find this just works so much better so obviously we've got to wait till this compiles and then once we've done this we'll show you the other methods show banner add by default only displays the ad at the top but we can provide some optional parameters to change that so this is just about to launch up now I'll say five more seconds five four three two one there we go okay there you go it's got our ad that has appeared at the top of the screen and you remember I was saying we're gonna add the test device because at the moment it's showing actually a real ad and we don't want that at least not for testing so if we go back here we get a comment actually we can just extend that now Google to get test ads on this device, call request dot test device. We've already done all that for you. All you need to do is copy this, paste it into settings where it says test device. So if I were to rerun this now, what you'll see in the application is a test ad. So just wait for this to reload. Still compiling, generating, oh yeah. I do wish it would launch quicker. Okay, so there we go. 
te a ad has been displayed and it's a test banner ad so if i were to oh, keep trying to use the mouse even though i've got it connected to my phone okay, if i click the banner ad which i just did it takes me to the web browser and usually it would show the website of the ad but for this it's just showing you the website of google that's all it is so let's just show you what else you can do with AdMob. so we got to show banner ad and but by default it shows it at the top but maybe i want to display it at the bottom so it's simple so no coco helper dot um add banner position dot e bottom and now if we run this instead of the ad banner being at the top it will now be at the bottom so okay we got this application all running There we go, the ad banner has appeared. And there's also another method for this. Instead of bottom, or you can also specify by top, but by default, it does it to top, so no need. You can also do e both. And that, that's where it would use the both the ad banner unit IDs. So if we just let this load up, there you see we've got two test banner ads and what you can also do is call them separately so you could have e bottom here and then on another event you could have e top so you you don't have to display them both at the same time if you want to ads okay so we're just gonna leave it as e both for now and now we're gonna show you how to actually hide banner ads and to do that is really simple uh, we're just gonna do it on the button click which is right here so sonar cocos helper actually i forgot to mention i think that because we've added the test device it's no longer moaning in the console so sonar cocos helper dot add mob dot uh no dot hide banner ad that's how you hide a banner ad in the helper by default it will hide both of the ad banners so it basically hides all visible ad banners so let's just this is loaded up now i'm going to click the button and as you can see both ad banners have disappeared so we can specify a parameter as well it's the same so if we do sonar cocos helper dot add banner position dot e you can do e both which is what it does by default or do e top so if i were to do e top and now let this run just wait for the ads to appear both ads have now appeared i'm just going to click the button the top ad has disappeared because that's what we put but the bottom one still remains so we could hide it on a separate event using e bottom or e both because even if you don't have both displayed and call e both it basically hides all visible ad banners for ad mob we're not going to show you e bottom because it's the same and we want you to just check it out just check that out just comment this for a moment and now finally we're going to show you the interstitial ads it's basically the ads that make quite a lot of money it's one of the most popular ads in terms of revenue revenue generation along with video ads now to do that show full screen ad this doesn't take any parameters well because you don't show it at the top or bottom you show it over the entire screen so let's run this now so when we click the button we'll have a full screen interstitial ad an example where this could be used if the user dies i've seen in several games user dies three times in a row something like that and a full screen interstitial ad is shown so if i click this button a interstitial ad now appears it says test obviously if you were to remove the test id your device id then you'll show a real ad and that's what would happen in real life and if i click this which i have just done it takes me to the google developer page but usually it would take the user 
to the page of the ad or the app store page depending on what sort of ad it actually is so if i just click the x button it disappears but my ad banners are still there so it's that simple to set up AdMob and start using it in your applications. But if you have any questions, feel free to post them on sonarlearning.co.uk forward slash question.php. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.